So how would you sum up the show in 20 seconds or less? It starts in, in Oxford and we're, it's, it's set now and so it's humans but we suddenly quickly realise that there are also creatures living in the world which are demons, witches and vampires and the story centres pretty much around a witch called Diana Bishop and she suddenly meets a vampire called Matthew Claremont. The relationships and the chemistry between uh, Matthew and Diana are so important to this show. And how did you build that chemistry? Well, I suppose that the, there's, two, there's two parts to that. One is the, the, it's inbuilt in, in the novel, which is great, but then you have to find two actors that, that might be able to do it. And, I, and, you, and you have that weird thing where I was sent off. I got, I got given the job, which was great. I was very excited, and then I got sent on a plane out to Los Angeles. Then you do, it's a kind of like speed dating. Uh, from what I, I mean, I've been with the same girl for 15 years, but from what I hear, speed dating's like. And I sat in a room, and and the, the, there was one person that we really wanted to have the job, and that was Teresa. Particularly as I saw a film that she'd done uh, with Andrew Garfield on the way on the way out on the plane, I thought, who is this girl? She's absolutely amazing. I didn't hadn't seen any of her work before. I mean, she started taking the piss out of me actually, if I'm honest, because I, I happened to be doing a golf swing in the mirror just as she entered. She's like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm busted. Um, so we just got on really well straight away. And I always think, well, isn't it just about learning your lines? But apparently chemistry is something slightly untouchable. And, uh, and, and I hear we have it. So, yeah, here's hoping that people enjoy the show. How did you bond when the cameras weren't rolling? We swear a lot, English and Australians. So, I mean, I suppose there, there was that too. And, but she also, she's had children pretty recently. And I've got three. And so the minute that they get to it, so it's just like, oh, here's mine. These are my kids. And I was like, oh, these are mine. And, and she was still breastfeeding and doing all of that stuff at the same time, so we were just having a bit of a giggle about, you know, how when you do that, things can change in size. Um, so, yeah, no, we got on very well, and we're st you know, still very good friends after six months of filming together, so that's good. What's your favourite thing about working with Teresa? She's so positive. I think uh, that's, you know, she's like an earth mother as far as, and she's like, I mean, her husband ended up leaving to go off and do a job which he wasn't meant to be doing, but she said, of course, you should go and do that. And so she was working these like 14 hour days really hard whilst having, whilst I mean, she had a nanny during the day, but obviously her little ones had to come in and be breastfed at many different times. And she was learning all the lines and doing a main part. But the minute her day finished, she had to go, back, go home and be mum was obviously my kids were back at, back at home with their mother. And so she was just had so much energy. And I, I think English is slightly more cynical, perhaps. Um, or maybe it's just me. And so she would keep me buoyant and happy and for most, for most of the time. Um, and, and she's just a brilliant actress. So all of those things together make it fun to go to work, really. It sounds like the cast really got on really well. What's your funniest memory from filming? I can't think of anything to mind. Every, every day was just very... There were certain scenes that Theresa... Because some of this novel is obviously very... It's very much sort of fantasy-based. And some of it, it I found quite amusing. Just, you know, having to... Mention, there was a day when I was filming something about... She had to tell me what she saw in a... In a um, in the book of life when she when she took it out. In Ashmole 782. And... Um, and the, she goes and there's this amazing drawing of an alchemical child, which was a, a baby, which was upside down. And I was like, and I just started laughing. And I found it, I actually couldn't laugh. I couldn't look at her throughout that scene because it's just such a bizarre thing to be talking about and be excited about. A baby upside down. Ooh. How were you with all the magic jargon? I mean, luckily for me, I didn't have didn't incantations because that's the witches. So I was pretty pleased about that because that does seem like mumbo jumbo, some of it. Um, but then you actually have to deal with the actual tech. I thought you were going to go with the technical uh, difficulties of actually put, like portraying the magic on screen. So there's various things that are connected to like almost invisible wire, which have to be tugged at certain times uh, to make it look like it magic exists. They've done really well actually, because that's the thing, isn't it? When you have a fantasy novel, it's very easy to write it. Like it's a castle and it has six towers and it's huge and it's everything's vast. And then you're like, I know, but we've only got a budget that's like, hmm. So it's 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 quite a hard. It was a very difficult thing to to put. Um, to make flesh, if you like, uh, and I think I think we've done a really good job. The books have such passionate fans. I mean, have you had any memorable fan experiences yet? There were a bunch actually who who, were, who happened to be in and around when we were filming in Oxford because you know you get a lot of visitors from from abroad and from America, particularly up there, if they aren't actually already enrolled uh, on campus. And so we would often get to set, and there'd be people that would be super passionate. And we'd only just started filming, really, so. We sort of go out and speak to the fans when they seem like a really nice bunch because sometimes you never know what kind of fans you're going to get and it's not necessarily it can be a little bit daunting if if you get like big groups of people coming up and being like so how's it going you know and it's, it felt like it was a bit too early to talk about like we well, think it's going okay 
Um, but they, you know, they, they seem like a pretty erudite, uh, intelligent bunch of people. So we'll see if we can please them with, with the adaptation. Looking back at your past back catalogue of movies, we love Watchmen. I'd love to know if you'd ever be up for doing a sequel. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I just think that they they're doing they're doing a television series of it now. I think that will do it better than. Again, it's that thing of doing a, a novel versus versus a film. And uh, I always think that I should have been that it should have been an actor who's a little bit older. So maybe maybe now I am the right age to play it. So maybe maybe I should. Okay, so now I have some uh, fan questions that have been tweeted in. The first one is, what surprises you most about your character? Well, I suppose the fact that he's so reserved in general, um, and he has such a checkered past, and you know, but the, the fact that he and he's he has he has problems controlling himself. He does suffer from this thing called bloodlust, which we learn about later. Um, but I might as well throw it in now, because uh, no one really understands what that means, probably. But um, but the fact that he falls for her so quickly, I think, considering he's his main thing is to try and understand why creatures are losing all their powers and suddenly this witch comes along and witches and vampires famously don't get along and that he there's this sense of inevitability um or that, that, that you know for a strong man he seems quite weak in some ways what's the major difference between creating a tv show versus making a movie well this is a tv show obviously um so uh time generally uh and and also the fact that there's a nature of, but due to it being adaptation, things change at, like continually throughout. When often, oftentimes when you do a movie, it's fairly set. People have been working on it. It's two hours. You know, the, the structure doesn't change that much. Maybe a tweak here or there. Whereas this was a living, breathing thing. And Jane Tranto, who's our producer, sort of prides herself on that she does not stop and will re-edit and tweak and change lines and blah 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 right up until literally the day it goes out. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if yesterday she was tinkering with something because. That's that, 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 in, that therein lies a, a sort of bigger difference. But it's quite nice also when, when you're doing when you're doing a book. It's nice not to have to do it in two hours. It's nice to have it unfold like the chapters of the book itself. So you have more time on screen. So in some ways you can do things in much more subtly. Have you read the books? And if so, uh, ha- will watching the show be different if you know how the books end? It's funny. Jane didn't want us to read the book to start off with. And then we just felt a bit naked about it. We're like, well, I need to know the mythology and everything that's going on. So we, we sort of said, look, we please. And she was like, OK. Um, so I read one and I haven't read two or three yet because uh, I don't want to ruin the surprise. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to have to read two very soon because we start it again in March. What's your favourite thing about your character? And do you have a favourite scene? I think the stag hunting was quite fun. So having, having, <laughs> having the possibility of incredible speed and agility, as opposed to the actual of doing it, which is up on a mountain in, you know, in the Brecon Beacons. And you're, and like my, my wonderful director at that point was saying, uh, any chance that you could possibly run a bit quicker, look a bit more agile? And you're like, well, you're, I'm running up a one in two gradient and there's potholes everywhere, but I'll give it a go. Um, so yeah, we got challenged. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have that kind of, he doesn't fly, but he has some pretty good, um, you know, physical strength. How did you prepare for your role? I read the book and I, we, we, ch- we chatted out, but you suppose that in some ways you can't really prepare until you meet the other actors that you're going to spend most of your time with. So spending really good amounts of time with Teresa and, and also working with Jane Tranter, who does no stone unturned. Um, she's a real inspiration as a producer. So, you know, you do your homework and you turn up and you do your best. It's like going to church. Once a week, do your best. If you could ask your character one question, what would you want to know? How do you take the left side of a golf course out of your swing? 